we have a blog post that actually goes into all this and I don't care how many times I've read that post and how many times I've figured I've gotten this. <laughs> That's exactly this. the comment I'm going to make when I kick this off. So just, no. okay. <laughs> this makes me feel dumb every time. <laughs> Cause I always screw it up whenever I say, you know, the, the one to one ratio and four to one ratio and how it all works out. Yeah, And so. I'll explain it. And it's really quite simple, simple to understand, but I have to review it every time. For some reason it just I doesn't stick. myself in knots. It doesn't I, stick. I can, Okay. Well, we'll, we'll I'll Look lean at you, on you Nate. then. Fantastic. Way, way to I, go. I can explain it so, if you guys are tongue-tied. He says, what I'm wondering is if that changes at altitude. So we're talking, and, and I should, let me take a step back really quick uh, to give people some context. What we're basically talking about is the efficiency that your body is, is, is operating at right here when we're talking about caloric consumption continuing to push Metabolic you forward. Metabolic efficiency. Metabolic efficiency. Yeah. So he says, what I'm wondering is if metabolic efficiency changes at altitude. That is to say, we know we can't produce as much power in general when we're at higher elevation. So is our efficiency dropping? If you do the same kilojoules at 3000 meters versus doing it at sea level, do the calories burned change? Okay. So right out of the gates, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, Jordan, I don't know, but I, <laughs> there, there are a lot of things I do know that, that I think will be of use. Um, so kilojoules are a very close estimate solid estimate of work done. Mm -hmm. we, we, we can all agree on this. Um, on, a, joule, on a road bike. When we're talking about, you know, on a bicycle, mm -hmm. doing that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Power in the in, pedals. In general, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Power, power in the pedals. training. You got mm -hmm. it. Um, so a joule, joule is a measure of energy, and it, it is a one watt for one second, mm -hmm. or a watt is one joule for one second. You yeah. can shape that equation any way you want to. Um, we create 4.186 kilojoules of energy per every dietary calorie. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that 4.186, let's just round it out to four, call it four kJs per dietary calorie. Mm -hmm. So big C calorie. Um, most of this is dissipated as heat. So it's heat waste. Most of it goes, it's, it's dedicated to thermal regulation. Small portion of it is actually converted to mechanical energy. That's what drives the pedals. Mm -hmm. And when I say a small portion, we're talking gross metabolic efficiency. So if you think of gross mechanical efficiency related to metabolic efficiency, you know, how well we convert our energy or our food to energy. Mm -hmm is along the lines of 19 to 27%. So we typically pin it at 25% or so for mm -hmm. easy math, even easier math, call it 23.9. <laughs> and then that means easy. the creation of four KJs <laughs> is exactly one cal. Mm -hmm. And that's actually pretty close to where most people fall in the low 20s mm -hmm. uh, across top performing athletes too. Mm -hmm. And we decided on this one because it's easy. I think Garmin does the same thing. Strava does the same mm -hmm. thing. Um, we don't know your exact efficiency. Mm -hmm. So like, and, uh, so I don't want to have a market. field where you can type it into the software because you don't know either. <laughs> it's overly complex and, it can and change. two people understand it. Can it can change too. And, and, yeah. and while you're, uh, it's not, these are all just rough things that you could use in comparison to other workouts you've done because at John's point, he's going to say mountain biking, totally different oh, yeah. road mm -hmm. bike. I bet if you're in the drops, it's going to be different than you're on the top. Cyclocross. Yeah. You know, like, uh, yeah. you don't know your basic metabolic. Triathlon too, like yeah. your position on the bike. Oh yeah. Right. Everything. <laughs> just so <laughs> getting out of the saddle versus remaining seated. Yeah. So basically it's a one-to-one. -one. <laughs> so, exactly. So yeah. that's what we do. Yeah. And it's nice and simple and it's easy. And you can always just look at your bike computer and look at kilojoules and be like, oh, that's And it's going to be I close have. enough for everything we use kilojoules mm -hmm. and calories for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's fair to say for sure. Okay. So um, in terms of what happens at elevation though, that's what I really don't know. It's, mm -hmm. I don't imagine the efficiency changes. I mean, I know power output is absolutely limited because, you know, the air density is lower. So, you know, per volume of air, you're getting less oxygen in the system, which, you know, as you acclimatize that, that, that to, to the altitude that shifts and comes back in line with what you could do at lower, lower elevations. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that affects metabolic efficiency. I don't, I don't, I don't know why it would. So this yeah. is beyond me. If anybody does know, feel free to chime in and, uh, we would love to learn from you, but I don't know. And if it does, I can't imagine it's, I mean, to, to change efficiency, is, I mean, can take years and years and years. And it's argued that right. it even happens then. Right. It doesn't change efficiency, but if I am doing an hour all out at sea level and an hour all out at 9,000 feet, mm -hmm. I'm going to burn less calories in that hour at 9,000 feet, just because I have limited your work capacity oxygen. is limited. Yeah. Exactly. So yep. that's one thing to think about. Yeah. I feel like you could probably test this, but you need a whole lot going on. You need like oh, I a, did test it at Leadville. Like you can no, just see it going. No, no, not, yeah. that, not that. I'm just saying like you could test if efficiency actually changes metabolic efficiency. You'd have to have like a room that's pressurized. You'd have to be able to measure the heat change. Yeah. So maybe it's be, been done. I couldn't find anything. I, be, I dug around for a while. It'd be a pretty Some involved test out there. for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. What about elevation increases for rushing but metabolic? Yeah. Rate? So, and that, and that happens. I mean, the body's under a, a certain level of stress. So your basal rate mm -hmm. will hike up a bit. And mm -hmm. there is, you know, some, some opportunity for, I suppose, weight loss in that case, but it's not, it's not too substantial. 
Um, I don't even remember what the figures were, but they're not impressive. It's not like you can go to 9,000 feet and just do everything you normally do and just shed the, shed, yeah. the, shed the fat. Yeah. That's not how it goes. But you yeah. do burn a little more calories when you go up to elevation because yes. your body is prepping or is trying to repair it or it's it's responding, itself responding to, to a stressor. Yeah, yeah. to being mm-hmm. at elevation. Exactly right. Feels the stress and it's working over time to get ready for it. So, yeah, I, I guess that the, the the ratio stays the same, so to speak, or whatever your efficiency well, is. We think. We think. Yeah, we think. Um, but what we do know is that you will work harder or you won't be as able to be perform limited. quite as high. Yeah. When you're at higher yeah. Which is like why that. athletes train high and live or uh, live high train low. Yeah. So you want to train in the presence of a lot of oxygen so you can do a lot of work so you can spur that adaptation. Then you want to go reside at higher elevation. So you get that bump in uh, EPO and red blood cells and all the things that come with altitude acclimatization. Exactly right. 